Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, coming at you with another video from the Nerd Cave. Today we're gonna to be talking about some of my favorite shortcuts in Windows 10. I'm sure a lot of these you know, but I guarantee you there's at least a couple in here that you don't know about. And I'd love to hear if you actually do know all of these down in the comments after the video. Also, I'm not gonna be covering every single possible keystroke imaginable because there's literally hundreds of them. I'm gonna be more focusing on the ones that I personally find the most useful in day-to-day -day operations and save me the most time when I'm doing stuff like social media, editing videos, posting stuff, switching between applications, things of that nature. Also, if you're having trouble with any of the hotkeys that I present in this video, make sure that you're on build 1909. That is the version of Windows that I'm running right now, and it may be necessary for some of these hotkeys to work as they're shown in this video. Because Microsoft is always changing things. All right, so the first shortcut that I'm going to show you is probably one of the most common shortcuts there is, and that is holding down Alt and pressing F4. That simply just closes the window. That'll close your application instantaneously. And it doesn't matter what application it is. Let's go ahead and open up Edge here. This is the new version. Now, if I hold down Alt F4, boom gone now the lesser known keystroke is if you're in an application that has tabs like uh edge chrome internet explorer uh, excel i mean lots of programs use these multiple document interfaces with tabs what you can do is you can hold down control and press f4 instead of alt and you can close down each individual tab and then once you're down to the last tab it'll close the application I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Now I'm gonna show you guys how to capture the screen and just segments of the screen to your clipboard or a file. Now to do this, all you have to hold is the Windows, the Shift key and S. So Windows key Shift plus S. It's gonna bring up a little bar at the top of your screen. Now you have a couple of options. You can do rectangular snip, you can do freeform snip, you can do a window snip, or you can do a full screen snip. So if I wanna snip my entire full screen, I can click on full screen snip. Now it's gonna show up down here in the clipboard. Click on that and it'll open up in this snip and sketch tool. So you can draw right over the image, like you want to point there. And then what you can do is you can come up and save it to the clipboard. See down here, you can save it to the clipboard, which will now take that saved image and put it in the clipboard. Or you can click save to file and you can save it anywhere you want on your hard drive. Now, let's say you just want to get like a little region of a window, right? This is really, really handy. This time we're going to tell it we just want to do a rectangular snip. So let's say I want to get a picture of this section of my desktop right here. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it and let go. And as soon as I let go, it's gonna open this little clipboard pop out down here. Click on that. And now I can edit just that image. So let's say I want people to look at my gambling debts folder. I can go ahead and highlight that. You know, I can grab a pencil, I can circle it. And then I can go ahead and save it to my clipboard. And now I can paste that anywhere an image can be pasted. All right, now here is a shortcut that I use a lot. And surprisingly, I still find a lot of people that don't know about it. This is the emoji screen. All you do is hold down the Windows key and you press period. And that brings up your emoji window. And from your emoji window, you can actually select between these, cow, is it cow emoji? I don't even know how to pronounce these, but these are just made with regular characters because some programs don't support emojis. Or if it does support emojis, you can select any of the emojis from all the different fields. These are all the standardized ones. However, for some reason, they're missing the middle finger. I don't know why. Come on, Microsoft, even Apple has the middle finger. So let's say we open up our Edge browser here. You can literally select any text field and then you just hold down Windows key and press period, and it'll pop up the emoji right next to that. And as you type, it will narrow down the emojis to what you're looking for. So if I want to do smile, it'll nail it down to all the different types of smiley faces. And then all I have to do is use the arrow keys to navigate or the mouse and press enter. There's our little emoji. Now this comes in handy when you're posting stuff on social media, because you can be like, I just ate dinner and then hold down Windows key I and type dinner. And then that brings up a bunch of food. So get the one that approximates your due, press enter and press escape. I just ate dinner and you got a little emoji on there. And this will work in any text field within Windows. I use that one a ton. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you'll see emojis in just about every post I make. I just find them entertaining. Let me show you what happens when you hold down the Windows key and press L. That instantly locks your box. So let me give you a scenario, okay? You're sitting here, you got a bunch of stuff up on the screen that you really don't want mom seeing or your boss seeing, and you start to hear the, the knob jiggle on the door. No, Windows key L. It all disappears and the box is locked, so you're saved. Now let's say you don't need something that's so dramatic. You wanna get everything off the screen really quick, but you also don't wanna lock the box because that might you know, draw some suspicion. So instead what you do is you hold the Windows key down and you press D for desktop. Boo! That takes you right back to your desktop and that will minimize everything on every screen. Now, so long as you don't open a new window, once the person leaves, you just hold Windows key and hit D again and it all comes back. It's magic. Yeah, I use that one a lot. All right, now I'm gonna show you another one of my favorites, which is actually moving the windows around using the keyboard. And I'm gonna show you why this is so useful. Now for this one, all you need to do is hold down the Windows key 
and use the arrow keys. If you push left, it goes left. If you push right, it goes right and it occupies exactly half of the screen. Now, if you go to one half of the screen, you push the up arrow, it'll take up one quarter of the screen. If you push down twice, it'll take down the lower quarter of the screen. So what this allows you to do is position windows perfectly edge to edge so that you can have up to four windows or two windows side by side without having to drag them so precisely. And if you keep moving, it'll actually transfer to other screens. See, I can keep going. It'll just go from one screen all the way to the other. Now watch what happens when I simply add shift to the operation. I can actually move it between screens. See, left and right will move it between the three screens. This one I use a lot, especially when I'm live streaming, because it allows me to get OBS in a quadrant, my chat in a quadrant, my activity feed in a quadrant, and I don't have to drag and drop and try to get all the edges to line up perfectly. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to open up multiple instances of the same application. So let's say you wanna open up your, your Microsoft Edge. Now you wanna open up another one. You click on it again, what happens? It just keeps opening the same instance, right? So the hot key for this is you just hold down the Shift key. And if you hold down the Shift key and click on it, it'll open a new instance. And now you can see that I have multiple instances open. All right, the next real useful shortcut I'm gonna show you is really simple. It's to open up the run dialog. And that's where you can pretty much just run any command on the system. To do that, you just hold down Windows key and R and it'll bring up the run dialog down in the corner. You can type in anything you want, like notepad, or I can do Windows key R. I can type in CMD and press enter. That gives me a command window. Another really cool hotkey, hold down Alt and press enter to full screen. That way it works on games and it works on console windows and some applications will also have a full screen mode that you can initiate. Ooh, I think I broke it. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Hey, Microsoft, I found a bug. I got it stuck in full screen and now you can't you can't move it or grab it. <laughs> I love that I'm finding bugs while giving you guys a demonstration. Good old Microsoft. All right, another really cool shortcut that I, that I use actually quite a bit is opening something elevated as administrator because a lot of times you'll open an application, you'll try to save a file and it'll say you can't save it where you want to because you don't have the right permissions or you're trying to run something that needs administrative privileges and it doesn't work right when you just double click it and open it. So for these specific cases, all you have to do is hold down control and shift before you click on it or before you press enter. So let me demonstrate. So let's say I wanna open Notepad. So I'm gonna hit Windows key R and I'm gonna type in Notepad. There's a million different ways to do it. Now, if I just press enter, Note Notepad just opens up here, but it's not running as administrator. So if I try to save the file to the C drive, garbage.txt. Oh, you don't have permission to save in this location? Oh, darn. Well, one way to fix that is to open it elevated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a run dialog. I'm gonna type Notepad, but this time I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift before I press enter. Now it pops up with a UAC dialog saying, oh, this wants to run as administrator. Do you want to allow it to? Yes. So now I can type in a bunch of crap and I can save it anywhere I want to. C colon backslash garbage dot TXT. There you go. Saved without a problem. It also works when you're clicking on applications. Like for instance, let's go ahead and open up the start menu here. Let's go ahead and open up 7-Zip. So hold down control and shift, click on it. Let's open up the file manager. And again, here you go. Do you want to open it as administrator? Yes. Probably not an application I'd normally open as administrator. Okay, another hotkey that I use a lot is opening task manager. Sometimes you need to kill a process or see how much CPU utilization you have. All you do is hold down control, shift, and escape. And there you go. Now you got your task manager. All right, let's say you want to open something on the task tray without using your mouse. You just want to use the keyboard. All you have to do is hold down the Windows key and press T, the letter T. Now that'll focus down here on the task tray and you can use the arrow keys to navigate back and forth. And then when you find something you wanna open, just press enter. Works like a charm. Another cool little trick is if you wanna open a specific item in the task tray, if you hold down Windows key and you press one through zero, you can actually open each of the applications down below just by holding the Windows key and pressing the index. So as you can see below, it's switching between the applications that are already open just by holding down the Windows key and pressing the number. I'll be honest, I don't use that one that much, but it's kind of a cool one to know about. All right, now for the keystroke that everybody knows about, Alt-Tab. Everybody knows that with Alt-Tab, if you just hold down Alt and push Tab, you can actually switch between all your opened applications and all you have to do is release to go to that application and it'll pop up on the screen. Now that's your basic multitasking. However, Windows has put in an upgraded version of this functionality. Now, if you hold Windows key tab instead of Alt tab, you get this big screen. And on this screen, you can see everything stays there even when you release the keyboard. And you can see each app by monitor. You can move around with the arrow keys, tab around and select what you want. 
press enter, or you can use the mouse and it just brings it right up. Now, again, if I hold Windows key tab, you're gonna notice something new you probably have never seen before. This is a feature that's been in Windows forever, but just isn't used very much. That's gonna be the virtual desktops. You notice up here at the top of my screen, I have desktop one, desktop two, desktop three, and desktop four. Now, what these are, are different desktops that you can have different applications open on. So this is our primary desktop. Now, let me show you what happens when I go to a different desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and hold down Windows key and tap, and then I'm gonna to go to the second desktop, and oh, now we got this other program running here. So that I got performance monitor running on this desktop. So now I can just quickly switch between my desktops, and I don't have to go back and rearrange all my programs and minimize them and maximize them. I can have these all as independent workspaces. Now, the trick is you can actually switch between those desktops only using the keyboard, and it actually makes it really simple. So if you wanna switch between desktops, you just hold down Control and Windows key at the same time, and then arrows left to right, and that's gonna switch between your desktops. I mean, how friggin' cool is that? So you get four desktops by default, but you can add as many as you want. Now you'd be surprised how many people do not know about virtual desktops, and they have been in the operating system for a very, very long time. All right, this shortcut is one that just about everybody knows, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in here because I use it so much. Now let's say you're just typing along, you're typing along and you make a mistake. You can hold down Control and hit Z, and it'll go back and you can toggle back and forth between that mistake and what's currently there. So let's say you accidentally delete everything. Oh no, where'd it go? Control Z, boom, it's back. That's a simple one that most people know, but I use it all the time. So I figured I'd throw it in here on the off chance that you're the one person that didn't know that. And if you are that one person, I wanna see you down in the comments. All right, now I've been saving some of the best for last. This is uh, one of the features that I probably use more than anything in Windows 10. And this is the expanded clipboard. Now, everybody probably knows about uh, cup, copy and paste. So here's notepad. I'm gonna type in, this is some text. Hit control A to highlight all. That's another hotkey, control A. Highlights all and I can do control C, right? Which is copy. And I can go to the next line. I can do control V, which is paste. And I can keep pasting this over and over again. Or I can grab control A, everything. And I can do control X, which is cut. So everybody knows cut, copy and paste, right? So these are the ones that are commonly known. I'd be surprised if anybody doesn't know this one. Now watch what happens when I press Windows key V instead of control. So Windows key V, now I get the new clipboard and it allows me to paste back everything that I've put in the clipboard. This remembers everything. Now, one of the coolest features of this is if you actually go into the clipboard settings, just hold down Windows key and I to open the settings menu quickly, do a search for clipboard, go to cloud clipboard syncing. Now you can actually turn on clipboard history and you can sign into account to sync across multiple devices. Now, what this will allow you to do is you can, you can use control C on one computer, go to another computer logged in under the same account or device, and you can paste from that same clipboard. This is super duper helpful. I personally don't use it since I don't log in under a live account for privacy reasons, but you can also disable that and just enable the clipboard history, which allows you to just remember everything on that one computer without uploading anything. So this feature is super handy because now I can do Windows key V, I can paste some of that text, I can paste some of that text, I can paste more text. I can go down and pick any of these. Now, now, obviously if I try to post an image here, it's not gonna allow me to because this is a text only program. But if it allowed for an image, I would be able to do it. Now, when you wanna clear the clipboard, you just do Windows key V, click on any of these and just say clear all. Now notice this one's sticking around. That's because I actually pinned it. If you have certain things you always want in the clipboard that you never want to go away, even when you clear them, just make sure that you pin them. But if you ever want them to go away, make sure you unpin them and then you clear all. Honestly, that has to be one of my all time favorite hotkeys. I use it so much. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the voice dictation shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Notepad here. Now all I have to do is hit Windows key and H. And that's gonna open up the dictation dialog where I can just start top talking and it'll take everything I say and put it into the text field. And then I can even say period, exclamation point, question mark, and it figures it out as I go. This uses the Cortana speech to text engine, which actually is pretty accurate compared to some of the other engines that I've used. End. And then it stops listening. And then if you're done with your dictation, just go ahead and close the bar on the top of the screen. And there you have it. This actually comes in handy if you're doing social media and you're not the fastest typer in the world. You guys know who you are. Metal Jesus rocks. All right, the next one I'm gonna show you is the action bar in Windows. This is actually a really, really handy feature inside of the operating system. Normally you swipe out from the side if you have a touchscreen device, but on a desktop computer, you just hold down Windows key and you press A. And that brings out the sidebar. And you can see it's got my Google Chrome with some information here. You can, you can dismiss any notifications. If you have problems with your computer, they'll show up here. But down here is the important one where you can actually enable airplane mode. You can connect to networks. You can project your screen. You can do screen snipping. Just like the shortcut I showed you earlier, you can configure a VPN, set up your network. You can do everything 
right here. And there's settings that you can change that allow you to add more and more. So this is actually a really handy one to keep around. Also, if you've never seen this before, go up to you manage your notifications and you can actually tell it specifically how granular of data you wanna receive. And pretty much anything that pops out from the side of the screen down here with a notification, if you miss it before it disappears, just hold down that Windows key A and it'll pop out with the notification so that you can see it if you missed it. All right, here's another super handy shortcut. Just hold down the Windows key and press X. This is gonna open up a little bar down next to your start menu that allows you to shut down and sign out really quickly, open the task manager. You can open up PowerShell. You can open up your power options, your apps and features. It's basically like a mini settings menu. Also, if you do Windows key S, it'll bring up search. So if you just wanna do stuff in search, but to be honest, if you hit the Windows key, it opens up the start menu and you're in search anyways. If you wanna navigate your file system on your computer, just hold down Windows key and press E and this brings up Explorer. So anytime you need to really, really quickly open something, you can also add stuff into your quick access list if it's stuff that you commonly access. But this one I use a lot. And you can also keep pressing it to open more instances. So if you have to copy files between one location and another, it makes it really, really easy. And the last shortcut I'm gonna show you today, which certainly there are hundreds more. If you guys enjoy this video, I'd be happy to do a follow-up in the future. Just let me know. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to leave feedback. For Microsoft. Now this one's super straightforward. All you have to do is hold down the Windows key and press F. This is gonna open up the feedback hub. You don't even have to be logged in to leave feedback, but if you are logged in, you'll get information back on if they've seen it or not. Okay, summarize your feedback. I just made a YouTube video and wanted you guys to know. Windows didn't crash. Okay, explain more. Well, not much more to say. Windows 10 didn't crash while I was shooting a video, and I think that is awesome. This is another hotkey I can show you guys. Did you know if you hold down the control key while you use the arrow keys, you can actually skip a word at a time? Instead of going a character at a time like this, you can actually go a full word at a time. Or if you hold down control and shift, you can select a word at a time. This comes in handy when you really got to select something you're not so good with the mouse. All right, let's see, choose a category. Okay, next. Category, suggestion, next. This is new feedback. Okay, well, there appears to be an issue. Here, do I got to expand the UI here? Oh, there it is. Found another bug, Microsoft. Oh, high DPI enabled your feedback hub needs to be resized to see the next button. All right, so this is new feedback, next. Here, let's add a screenshot. Let's go ahead and just grab my, my folders up here. Okay, that's in the clipboard, so I'm gonna go ahead and Windows key V that. And I agree to send attached files for diagnostic to Microsoft. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna submit it anyways. And boom, Microsoft thanks you. And that's it, you can submit your feedback. Now, just cause you submit feedback, don't expect it to get attention. Usually it takes thousands, if not tens of thousands of feedback reporting a similar issue to get analyzed by uh, basically AI and deep learning before a physical human gets to see it at Microsoft. All right, guys, well, that was just a few of the shortcuts that I use in Windows 10 on a daily basis. And I'd love to know if you guys have other shortcuts that you use because there are a lot of them inside of the product. And if you guys would like, I could create another video like this in the future. Just leave a comment down below or come over and follow me at Barnacles on Twitter. I'm sad to say that's my most active social network. Also, be sure to check the video description. I'm gonna have links to my other live streams that I do throughout the week. And if you do have content suggestions, I'd love to hear about them. Now, if you think I've earned your subscribe, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If not, I'm gonna keep trying to get it from you. And one day I will. And if you're bored, check out my video I just did on RTX Voice. It's actually a really amazing technology. Really caught a lot of people off guard, honestly. Didn't expect that, NVIDIA. All right, guys, I gotta start getting set up for my live stream over on Twitch, and I will see you guys in the next one. And never forget, I love you. Now wash your hands. Thank <laughs> you.